another story that kind of speaks to Paul and his generosity was, uh, again, I was probably around 14, 15, and he was down here at OBW scouting people, and we all got out to BW3s. He was taking time to tell us about him, Tracer and Kane, and how close they were. And I remember him saying that they all three had such big heads that Undertaker had to get their hat, because remember he had the Undertaker uh, right. with the red devils, and Biker, Taker was Biker Taker. And Paul wasn't with him in Canada, and the Taker went out and he got these hats made for them customized to fit all of their big heads. He said, we're the only three people in the world who have an Undertaker hat in this size. And it said, you know, Brothers of Destruction on the back of all three of them, which wasn't on the, the hat. The well, this is the story I didn't need in the Yeah, it was my hat that the Taker made for all that. But we're at the BW3s, and it was just me and Percy at the table. For whatever reason, like people were up eating drinks, going to the bathroom. He gave me his business card. It had his personal information, his phone number, his uh, email address. It's all these things. I've known Paul maybe twice, like two or three times. Yeah, he had no real reason to treat me this way, but he just did. And he said, Chris, you're a good guy. You're a good kid. And if you ever get in any trouble, you can't tell your dad about it. You can't tell your Uncle Jimmy about it. You can't tell anybody about it. You just call Percy. Percy, get your lawyer. I'll get you out. Whatever we need to do, I'll take care of you. Just, just keep this with you. And, <laughs> you know, looking back, that means more to me than just about most of my interactions in the wrestling business. I guess that's Percy's way of saying no matter how smart, how decent, how good a person you are, everybody in the wrestling business gets in trouble, and I'm here to bail you out. Yeah, and I mean, and it's just, it, I don't know if he thought about it before he said it. I don't know if he was serious or what, but it, just, it made me feel like I was so special. It was a guy. And you know this until the, the night Percy died. Uh, Chris told me about it, and uh, he said, well, if you got something that you, you can't tell your dad about, you know, gave I never had a personal business card, but he gave it to my son so he could get in touch with him if he ever needed him. And it was just, it was the sweetest thing. And, I mean, and I was telling my dad, it, it's hard to call a man sweet. Like, you think about yeah. you think about guys, especially in the wrestling business, you don't call them sweet. That's just not something you think is an appropriate term. But with Percy, that's, that's him. He was yeah. just a sweet, sweet man. He was just kind and gentle and loving and great, and I hope my daughter would get to meet him someday. And to tell you how he himself backed that up, there was a night at the Louisville Gardens, and Christopher was a little bitty at the time. He was just a few years old. And I had to meet the Undertaker and Paul Bear. He was, uh, we was there as guests to Jimmy's. I don't even know if I was at OBW at the time or not. I, I don't think we'd started at OBW yet. And I was kind of, I was kind of in with some Google. Smoky Mountain, I don't think it started. Well, you know, it had. Smoky had it started, but it probably folded by It now. folded in, what, 94? I think so. Yeah. So, um, Paul, so I see Paul come back, and we've had some catering and some soft drinks. And, and uh, Paul walks by, and I hand Paul a couple of soft drinks. And I said, Paul, what I'm able to get you to um, sign an autograph for my son. I said, he's been dying to meet you. I'll be right back up. All right. Well, he went downstairs and he never came back up. And my feelings were hurt. Christopher's feelings were hurt because we stayed back there all night so he could get Paul Bear, Paul Bear's autograph. So I saw him again a few months later, I think in Cincinnati. And uh, I see Paul in the back. I said, Paul, I said, man, I said, uh, you seem like such a good guy. I said, man, you hurt my son's feelings. How did I do that? And I said, well, I need to sign an autograph for him. And, and uh, you didn't come back up and you all but ignored us. Well, that, well, Kenny, that ain't me. That, that's just not what I'm about. I wouldn't do that. And he goes, oh, you know what happened? He said, that was the night they fired about a third of the roster. <laughs> he said, everybody was in tears. Everybody was upset. Everybody, nobody wanted to deal with anybody or face anybody. And he was right, because I knew uh, Tatanka, Tatanka got fired that night. I think Davey Boy, too. I think that's one of them. Davey Boy, maybe. I can't remember. But there was a several of them that got fired that night. And even Jimmy wasn't sure if he was going to have a job at the end of the night. Everybody was, was pretty concerned. And so that was the night, and, and Paul was down there consoling everybody, more than worried about coming back up for the autograph that I wanted for my kid. And, but he apologized up one side and down the other that he left Chris hanging that night and just tried to explain to me, Kenny, that's not me. That's not the person I am. If I told you I'd be there, I should have been there, and, and I apologize to you for not. 